Yeah, thank you so much um, for the, uh, yeah, just, I want to start off by thanking uh, um, Prof. Daniels just for inviting us to the conversation. You know, it's so valuable, I think, for the NRF to be involved in these conversations and see the, the thinking or hear the thinking and, and see the developments um, at, at a university. And certainly, as, um, as Prof. Jones pointed out, a university that's really, in many sense, leading the way um, when it comes to community engagement and really from an innovation perspective, um, looking at these things quite differently and innovatively. So a really uh, a valuable conversation and I think significant congruence, hopefully, with, um, with what I'm going to be talking about and, and presenting. Um, Prof. Daniels asked me to present on societal impact, um, looking at it from a policy um, context um, in South Africa. I'm going to look at it through two essentially NRF policies or or frameworks, agendas that we've been working on. Um, the one mentioned already by Prof Fielding, um, and that's the, the NRF research agenda, a uh, research impact agenda, sorry. I'll also link that with a, a fairly more recent um, development, um, looking at engaged research and how that um, contributes into um, the, the research impact agenda um, that we have set for ourselves. Um, the research impact agenda, um, is now published. Um, it's, it's online, uh, the NRF framework uh, to advance the societal and knowledge impact um, of research. Um, I think it, it's, it's important for us to start and just discuss what are we meaning, at least by NRF, when it comes to impact. Um, we, we've defined impact as, as that uh, what's on the screen, a beneficial change in society or knowledge advancement brought about as direct or indirect result of the NRF's research support interventions, uh, whether planned or uh, unintended, immediate or long term. So a number of variables there. And the one thing that brings it all together is beneficial change. You know that uh, that we see impact. We we're focused on impact in in a positive direction. That's bringing a, a beneficial change to to broader society. Um, but yet with an understanding that sometimes we um, we realize impact um, and the impact pathway is not always clear cut so sometimes you realize impact through the research process that is unintended um, but is still of benefit to society um, and sometimes that takes a, a short amount of time um, other other um, types of impact will take a much longer um, a longer period of time um, we however do look at it through these very distinct lenses distinct lens of knowledge impact and, and societal impact. I think Prof Fielding referred to that as academic impact. So we've, we've defined these two areas of, of, of impact or two lenses to look at impact. Um, to the first knowledge impact obviously is the, the advances that we're making in our scientific understanding. So understanding how we're interpreting data, how we, uh, the methods we're using to do that, uh, the theories, applications of that. Um, of that. Um, so that's this, this kind of area of, of, of knowledge impact, which is really, as has been pointed out, has been quite a, a focus, you know, in many of our um, policies that we set up in, in, in South Africa. Um, you know, we've talked about publish or perish kind of uh, type of policies. Um, and, and that has for, for many years been, been I think, a, a focus um, for us. But there's a second leg, and, and really um, we, we're discussing that at length today. And that's the societal impact. So the value of re that research adds to society across various fields or, or spheres. Um, and we look at these three different elements, so societal, economic, and environmental, um, but also look at it um, in, in, in a positive sense. You know, it's the, it's the, the, the adding value to the quality of people's lives in, in South Africa and more broadly. Um, so if we're able to um, essentially focus and look at both of these, and sometimes we'll need to be looked at independently and sometimes at a, in a, in a more integrated kind of approach. That's led us now as the NRF to, um, to start looking at an engaged research um, agenda. Um, and really the, the, the intent here is that we see that, that the mode in order for us to attain uh, knowledge and societal impact is to ensure that there is effective engagement within the research process. So really setting out the, the kind of aims of, of what we're trying to achieve through um, looking at engaged research and setting an engaged research agenda um, for the NRF 
is to firstly look at a, a shared understanding of what we are meaning um, across the NSI or the National System of Innovation when we talk about uh, this term engaged research. Often what, what we um, are coming to, to know through our engagements with universities and other stakeholders in the sector is that terminology often is quite disparate, but often the intent or the objective of, of what is trying to be achieved is there are similarities. Um, so the shared understanding of, of what, it, what is engaged research and, and what may be within different contexts is, being, uh, is, is aiming at the same objectives as, as we are terming when we talk about engaged research. The next kind of intent for us to look at, at engaged research in the NRF um, is essentially to provide a strategic position through which we as NRF can support engaged research and more deeply embed it across the research um, infrastructure in South Africa. Obviously, when it comes to actually administering this as, a, as a, a funding agency, we need to be able to set up metrics and processes by which we can design and implement and assess um, the effectiveness of engaged research. So that's one element of what we're looking at as well. And then also to develop networks and, and uh, promoting growth of localized engaged research capacity. Um, you know, because as I pointed out earlier, across the research for the university system in South Africa, we see that different universities are almost further down the line when it comes to um, research engagement um, and societal impact. And really it's to create these networks and promote growth across um, the, the university sector and research sector in, in South Africa. From a policy perspective uh, and leading up to the point where we are now, there's been many developments um, and some of these um, you would, would be very familiar with. Um, I'll take us back to 1996 to the white paper on on science and technology. Um, and really in that there, there's a focus on, on scientific literacy, which has been a focus kind of in many of the policies over the years and up to the point um, in South Africa, but really uh, focused on awareness. So essentially making the broader public aware of um, and understand um, and, and increase the understanding of the general public as to what is science and, and, and what are the scientific discoveries and, and inventions that have have already come to pass. Um, so it was almost a downstream type of um, activity of, of, of raising awareness about what is going on in, in, in science. The research and development strategy links that to human capacity. Um, so essentially says, well, we need to raise uh, public awareness of science and, uh, and understanding of it because we need more skills in the sector, in the research sector. So to build the research sector, we need to develop that interest. Um, and, uh, and that was kind of the link when it comes to engagement um, in, in, in the research and development strategy. Um, more recently in 2015, the Department of Science and Technology um, uh, um, established what they call the Science Engagement Strategy. And that has, has four different aims that it's set. The one is kind of this very much an awareness aim mm -hmm. to popularize science. The next is, is to develop a critical public, which starts to look at, at more of a, a two-way um, kind of engagement between broader society um, feeding that into research, um, and the two other aims to promote science communication and to profile um, uh, uh, research or South African research. More recently then in 2019, the white paper, the, the, the updated white paper on, on science, technology, and innovation introduces this term responsible research and innovation, which really starts to um, focus um, more on engagement of all societal um, actors across the, the, the research cycle, and that's responding to specific societal challenges um, and developing joint solutions now um, between, um, between broader society and, and research. Um, this is also then brought into the National Research uh, Foundation amended um, act, in, and as well as then in our vision, we quite strongly lay out our intent of, uh, of, of uh, setting a, a research impact agenda, as well as then a engaged research agenda. I'll now take you on a, a little bit of the more recent kind of developments and thinking um, that um, with regards to engaged research um, within the NRF. So in, uh, in our, our various uh, dialogues that we've had up to now, um, we are starting to kind of formalize what we, how we're viewing engaged research. So NRF uh, at the moment positions our engaged research um, as a research that integrates a considered approaches to engaging communities and society in and with research across the full cycle, um, ensuring communities are primary stakeholders, active contributors, as well as beneficiaries of research. 
and also encompasses the multitude of ways that researchers interact with stakeholders and communities over the various phases of research. Um, so there's a, we, we need to in, ensure that in our thinking about engaged research that we are not overly restricted because uh, engagement can happen in many different settings, in many different ways with a, a multitude of different types and groupings of stakeholders. Um, and, uh, and, and we see that as, a, as an important thing to define in how we uh, view engaged research. Um, we see it as a, it needs to aim to improve public trust in science and enhance democratization of science and also improve this relationship um, between science and society. So with the, this kind of positioning of, of what engaged research is, what this term is, we then have been drafting a set of principles um, which, are, which are still in their draft format and, and kind of we, we're discussing um, on various different for, um, forums at the moment. And I'll, I'll present these, these draft principles to you now because I think, again, there's, there's great congruence between what's been discussed and said already in the session um, with, with some of these principles. So the first principle looks at actors. Ellis, if I can just yeah. come in here, sorry. I think it's important that we see the, the principles, but you over time at the moment. So I just want to Am check I? back with you how okay. much time you need. I'll take, I'll flip through the, the five principles very quickly. So I'll maybe a minute, would that be all right? Fine, absolutely fine. Yeah. All right. So the first principle looks at active citizenship, just meaning that a, a, a scientist sees themselves as an active a part of society that their research is, is for a common good. The second principle looks at the principle of reciprocity. Um, so for mutual benefit, that the research is conducted for mutual benefit. Um, and really that there's equal standing amongst partners um, in this kind of knowledge co-production co um, scenario. And that there's specific values that we see that need to be established. So trust, honesty, empathy, uh, accountability, and Ubuntu. Um, as being fundamental to ensure uh, that that's, that's achievable. Um, next is the trans and interdisciplinary knowledge nature of knowledge production. Um, so really that, that we advocate for um, that, that researchers are working across kind of acad academic disciplines um, towards active transformation. Um, and then uh, ethics and sustainability, this must all be underpinned by ethical standards, which sometimes are are different for engagement, research engagement to kind of normal kind of re research practices um, and, and essentially will act towards the, the intent of beneficence and non malfeasance um, and including the triple bottom line of people, planet, and profit. And then lastly, um, relationship building. You know, this can't be done without established relationships and, and often over extended period of time. Someone was commenting in, in the chat box about uh, even over the COVID period. Um, having lost those relationships because uh, civic organizations have closed down and, and so forth. Um, so that relationship building uh, needs to be maintained and built over, uh, over a course of time. And sometimes that, that's quite long term. All right, um, I'll, I'll end there. Uh, it's just a small quote from our, our CEO. And also just to mention that, uh, that we've got a grant coming out um, for uh, inclusive community-based research, uh, which will be published in the next uh, couple of weeks, which may be of interest to you. Thank you very much. So Thank you so much, Mr. Ellis.